All right, today's Mint Mobile Hotline question is asking about the rise of video game adaptations. Hey, John and crew, this is Blake, and my question has to do with the recent trend of TV and movie adaptations of popular video games. So my question is, do you think that this is Hollywood's new version of the young adult movie adaptations, kind of like Divergent and The Maze Runner? And more importantly, do you think audiences will end up getting burnt out of TV and movie adaptations of popular video games, just like they did for young adult novels? Thanks, and bring on the sales season. All right, thanks a lot for phoning that in, Blake. And it's a really interesting question, because it used to be, when are we going to get some video game adaptations? And now we got a, just a slew of them coming. We got a whole bunch of video game adaptations, not only that are getting ready to come up on our big and small screens. Last of Us starts this Sunday. But, I mean, a whole ton of them production. We've got Sony that ded created a completely dedicated studio just to adapting its video game properties into movies. It's like nothing we've ever seen before. Now, you're right. The YA phase came in heavy and hot, went out pretty quickly. With a whimper, with certain standouts like the Twilight franchise, which, by the way, made a lot of money. The Hunger Games stuff, which, by the way, made a lot of money. Uh, others that didn't do as well, Divergent, and, and a couple of others. So it's an interesting question to ask. With all this new you know, influx of video game adaptation material coming, could the general audience grow fatigued of it as quickly and have it burn out as quickly as I say did with the YA stuff. And by the way, YA stuff still exists. It's still just nowhere near as prominent as it was for that short window of time. Hey, we're getting another Hunger Games movie this year. Yeah, that's yeah. right, we are. So I would say there is a one big key fundamental difference between the YA example. And again, it's a fair question, but between the YA stuff and the video game stuff, the YA stuff was all incredibly similar in tone. Whether you're looking at Twilight or Divergent or Hunger Games or, or whatever, while they were very different base stories, they were YA targeted, right? They had that feel, they had that DNA. And so an audience could go to it, watch them and very easily feel like, I feel like we've seen this before, or I feel like we've done this before. Not to say that some of them weren't great. A couple of the Hunger Games movies were fantastic. I really liked the first Divergent, all that kind of stuff. But you could be forgiven for saying it all has a very common DNA amongst itself. Whereas video game adaptation is far more broad. For example, we are getting ready for two big properties to hit our screens. Last of Us and Mario Brothers. <laughs> These ain't nothing alike. Like there is, there is absolutely nothing you can draw some connective tissue on a DNA level. They both came from a video game format. All right. But this is a completely different things. And I think that is the one thing. Now I'm not saying that video game adaptations are going to become the, as the, the next comic book movies. I'm not necessarily saying that, but I don't think it will suffer that kind of recoil that the YA adaptations did because they are so vastly different from each other. We were just talking about Borderlands the other day. I mean, that movie is going to be incredibly different from a lot of the other stuff we have coming. Anyway, Chris, you hear this. I mean, we, we saw YA come in strong, mm -hmm. fell out of being a hot property for a while, even though the movies still exist around here. Could video game adaptations suffer that same fate? I mean, yeah, to your point, if they were all the same kind of video game, if we were all the same genre. Off camera, we were talking about this, where for me, really, that kind of YA boom was when it was all the dystopian YA stories yeah, yeah. of Hunger Games and then Divergent and Maze Runner. And um, there were there was another one about, like, aliens taking over you or something. I don't even remember what it was. Uh. But they, <laughs> uh. that, that shows how good it was. But I think these are all so varied in their tone. All that they share is a medium. And now they're going to just share a different medium, right? They're not the same stories. Borderlands is wildly different than Last of Us, is wildly different from Super Mario Brothers. Now, if we were getting a whole bunch of first-person shooters coming to the big screen, then yes, we mm. could suffer fatigue. If we were only getting like Mario, Donkey Kong, those kind of players from the Nintendo world, sure. But having Mario and then, you know, we'll talk about this later, potentially Zelda, 
those are really different stories. Those are really different kind of things that you play too. So I don't think we'll have that kind of fatigue, especially if these are done well. That's the thing. The YA boom, a lot of them were just shitty. I mean, they just weren't good movies. They were trying to play with a blueprint that didn't always work. If they have good stories, strong characters, great, great storytelling, then we'll all tune in. Rob, I mean, it, it, we see fads come and go in Hollywood all the time. How are the video game ones positioned right now? Well, I think they're, it's very different from YA because the YA novels had teen protagonists. And they all kind of were, like you said, variations on the dystopian theme, a little romance involved, mm -hmm. some authoritarian government. There's somebody that had usually to be a love triangle. Yes, yes. Most the lo usually a, a love triangle, triangle as well. Yeah. Something that, whereas video games are not constrained by the genre or type of movie they are. I mean, John, I watched a, a behind the scenes trailer for um, Gran Turismo, which is a racing game yeah and they, they, it looks like they applied what what they did with top gun maverick to racing in terms of camera rigs and the way we're going to see races shot and it was this this trailer was it focused on the behind the scenes like how they were shooting the races which looked really cool gran turismo also couldn't be as different well i guess mario kart but <laughs> gran turismo is different from mario brothers which is different from the last of us i i think it's different i mean what people are looking for, whether it's books, whether it's video games, whether it's reboots of TV shows, people are looking for great IP to adapt into hopefully great stories that become great movies. And I think video games have a far more diverse pool to draw from in terms of, I mean, you could do a Western in Red Dead Redemption if you yeah. wanted to. You know, you could do your Warcraft or your, which they've done, but you can do all kinds of different stories. The real question is, like, how do you screw up Assassin's Creed? Oh, oh wait. <laughs> yeah. That was you know, awful. Yeah, that I was mean, one of the worst uh, ever. Yeah, and it's 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 like just because it's got a video game that people love doesn't mean it's going to make a great movie. And I hope, look, I want I want all movies to be good, but what I do think the, the what video games have that YA fiction doesn't is a diversity of stories to draw from. You know, look, not to play... But, I don't want to beat a dead horse. I don't want to, to play with formula or anything, but man, you know what would have been great in Assassin's Creed? <laughs> I, I always go back to this. Oh my God, that movie had so much potential. Like everything that happened for the sake of, of terminology, we'll just call it the present and the past. Right. Everything that happened in the past in that movie was pretty great. Was pretty great. Everything that happened in the present of that movie was pretty God awful. Yeah. If they had done that movie, because they wanted it to be a franchise. If they had done that movie all in the past, like just set it as the period piece yes. Assassin's Creed. Did nothing, made no references to the, the the other stuff, whatever. And then at the end of the movie, like not post credit, but just before the main credits roll, if at the end of the movie they've they've defeated the bad guy, they've been triumphant, all of a sudden zzz, like he has a bit of like a glitch. Where all of a sudden he has a quick vision of what the future is, and then they leave it at that. You would have had the entire audience going, ah, oh, there it is. And it would have set up the franchise. Anyway, I don't go into that's all a that. Great, that's actually a great idea. Oh, they should have they didn't do that. Because you know, like you said, the past is what's interesting. The future, we've seen variations of that future a million times. That's what yeah. makes the gameplay so fun is when you start to have those glitches and you're like, no, but I'm so involved in this moment right yep. now. They, yeah. uh, and by the way, guys, just for the record, because I do see the live chat going on, just for the record, I am Team Jacob. All right, <laughs> question is for you guys. What do you think about this? Do you think that the video game adaptations could suffer the same fate as YA? Do you see them like we do as being different enough to kind of have its own separate challenges? Whatever you guys think, jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Guys, we want to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save money this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. Guys, I have told you before that when I was on one of the major phone carriers, I was spending literally three times as much every month and 
switching to Mint Mobile couldn't have been easier. So for people just looking to save some extra money this year, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in just minutes with eSIM. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia.